Gospel Diaries, we're back and it's time to delve a little bit deeper into uh, this queen sitting next to me, her her Gospel Diary. So now, um, matter of fact, let me ask you this before we even move further. Did you record or sing with anyone prior to the uh, harmonettes? I forgot to ask you that. Before the harmonettes, I just sang with my church church choirs and stuff like that. And what church was that? Friendship Baptist Church in the West Sipico. I sang in that choir there. then I did solos in different churches in Birmingham because my mom, when when I was seven, I think seven, eight years old, my mom would take me to church and people wanted to hear me sing. And she'd stand me up in this chair and I had to stand in front of her and stand up in the chair and she holding the chair so I won't fall. And I had to sing and stuff like that. That I was doing it that way. And then they had a thing downtown at a Pizzit department store mm-hmm. and they, it was one Christmas and you bring the children down and they let them make a little record. And that was the first record I made. And and I was so singing, I, 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 was, I was singing the song, I'm Bound for Higher Ground. I'm seeking a, I'm bound for higher ground. I'm seeking a golden crown and I can't remain on this circular plane. I'm bound for higher ground. Oh, I'm bound, bound for higher Keep ground. <laughs> I'm seeking a golden crown. I can't remain on this earthly plane because I'm bound for higher ground. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and that's all prior. And I did it again. And that's prior to the gospel harmony. Right. Oh, yeah. I I was young then. I was real young then. I was like four years old then. I'm glad we were able to uh, capture that. And again, I must uh, must revisit one more thing uh, before we go to uh, James Herndon because uh, that last album, I think it was 1981, if I'm not mistaken, then with the BC and the M Choir with Dorothy Love Close. But prior to that album, she had started recording and she used the name for the group with her singers. Uh-huh. Now, were you a part of her singers? No, I wasn't. Okay. I, I went with the name to her singers. Okay. I was with Dorothy Love and the Harmonettes. Okay, okay. That's for Harmonettes. Just wanted to clarify right. that. Uh-uh. Okay. Now, the, the one she did with her singers was the extra people that she started using after I had moved to California. And yeah, that's see. when she reorganized and, and had new people come in and she named it Dorothy Love and her singers. You remember that? Yes, I remember. <laughs> I was kind of scared. I was, I was still alive. <laughs> Are you still alive right I'm now? I'm still alive. <laughs> you know, it makes me think about Abertina Walker. What's she say? I'm still here. I'm still here. The, what, what is the lyric? I made Low, it through. Uh-huh. And so have uh-huh. you. Come, some, come through the fire, uh-huh. come through the flood. Uh-huh. I'm still here. Uh-huh. Kept by his blood. Okay, now what's the part? He said, though the enemy try. What is it? To, to destroy me. Uh-huh. He was what, firing darts. Yeah, firing darts. That right. I could I, not see. That's right. But God, he wouldn't let it. He wouldn't let, let it be. That's he right. sent some angels, and they were camp on. Look at Look Cap at you, all you're around still me. Here. Look Cap at me. I'm still, I'm still here. <laughs> Listen, look at him. <laughs> he gets, hold on. The man is getting happy over there. Look at him fight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's right. That's right. Beat the devil down. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So let's get to James Herndon. How did you meet James Herndon? And, and just because, you know what? I'm grateful for this platform. There are a lot of people that watch this Gospel Diary. They know very little about gospel music. And a lot of times when I talk, I'm talking, though, they know exactly who I'm talking about. They don't people know. Overseas, but they want to know. Right, so, they want to know. So just to give a background, the James Herndon that I'm referring to was the accompanist for the caravans from 1959 to 1966. Right. He rearranged songs like uh, I Won't Be Back and wrote many of their uh hits so shout outs to uh james herndon who is still alive and we actually just got done talking with him on the phone 
That's right. Oh, his voice sounds very That's robust. That's been a long and, time. Yeah. Golly. It's so long. I got to really remember what, how did I get started with him? But he, he called me and he, uh, what that boy name was saying with him? Nathan. He, Nathan. Okay. He came and picked me up. Oh, so this was in LA then? Yeah. Okay. That's when it was. It was in LA. Oh. And he came and picked me up and I went then I, I, I rehearsed with him and stuff and he liked it and he wanted me to sing with him. Hey, you actually recorded with James Hunter. Tell us a little bit about James Hunter that you remember. The, what hey, you can well, remember. I, I, I know he was very nice to me. Everyone, and I don't say that to be bragging or boasting, but everybody I have ever sung with they fell in love with me, and they just have Della Reese on Touched by an Angel. Mm-hmm. She flew me in two years in a row to be her special guest on her Della Reese praise thon And the first time she had me, she took me up to this room, to the in this hotel, and said, pick whatever sweet you want. I ain't nobody never told me I could pick whatever sweet I want. <laughs> I just had a room with a bed in it. Okay. And, <laughs> <laughs> And she took me in and I, and I, I said, well, with all of them sweets, I like all of them, just pick one for me. And I said, I take them right here. And I went in there and I, and I, I took a nap because I had to come back down that evening for the rehearsal because they, they flew me in and everything. Mm-hmm. And I, and I, I went over the song that I was going to sing so I could help somebody as I pass along my living to not be in vain. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, uh, Tata Vega mm-hmm. was, was on the show. And she was late getting there the night of the show. Mm-hmm. So she came up to my room, Delores did, and caught me by my arm like this and walked me all the way down to the stage. Mm-hmm. I said, is that the time I'm supposed to be singing? And I'm standing out listening to myself. I said, what is she doing? She got Alzheimer's or what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. And she took me up to the stage. She said, I need you to stand in for Tata because she ain't got she had car trouble and she gonna be late getting here. Wow. And I said, Yes, ma'am. Wow. <laughs> and I went on up and I sung. And Brenda Lee Ager, mm-hmm. that sang with Jerry Butler, mm-hmm. she was my best friend because she was with me when I was with Diana Ross. Mm. And she, that girl cried. So after I got through singing, after we got through singing and we was eating, she was still crying. I said, Girl, if you don't stop crying, we don't have to swim out of here. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna change the uh, the setting uh, after this question. We're gonna uh, go to the go to the uh, go to the car, and then we're gonna head to the church. But the million dollar question is: What led you to Los Angeles, California? Well, I always wanted to go to LA a long time ago. Even when I was young, growing up, I kept folks talking about California. You know, children used to play games, and they, they said, "Where you live?" And they would say, "I live in Chicago." I said, "I live in California." Mm. Then they would say, "Where you live?" I live in London, England. Where do you live? I said, I live in California. Mm. And every time they get to my part, I would say, I live in California. I always wanted to go there, wow. not knowing I would ever get there, but I did. But I had got, I, I had been stricken with MS. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 1979. Jesus. That's when I went to, moved to California. Mm-hmm. And I went to UCLA, and that's where they discovered what was wrong with me. I had MS, and I've been had it ever since. 1979. Now, I was walking. I, I didn't, wasn't walking with that, but they did a knee replacement on me in the hospital in April. And when they did the knee replacement, the, the MS was asleep, had rested. And when they did the knee replacement, that surgery triggered the MS and woke it back up. That's why I can't walk right now. So mm-hmm. I'm doing a little better than what I was I went to Bruce because I could I couldn't do I couldn't do none of the stuff I'm doing now with walking and stuff. Wow. They had to almost carry me, but it's getting much much better. So in the, when I'm in the house now by myself, I lead a walker and I walk walk close to the wall and walk without holding on mm-hmm. so I can get used to doing mm-hmm. it without that. But that's what happened. All right, you guys, we will be back, and the next time you see us, we will be in the car. All yeah. right, all right. All right, welcome back, Gospel Diaries. Yes, we're in the car. Look, take in the scenery. We're in, where are we at? Birmingham? Birmingham. What Alabama. side of town is this? Anybody this know? is the west. The west. This is the west. What side? <laughs> 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 All right, so we're with the one and only, the lovely Miss Cleo. All right, so let's talk about, let's delve into your your experience or your connection with the king of gospel music. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> That was my boo. How did how did you what how what led to the connection? Well, I already knew him when I was with Dorothy Love. 
Really? And we was on the Lila Pope concert That's at the how? same time. Okay. And, and we, we was on the same stages and all of that. And then when they said, uh, we have a package, that meant the package meant James Cleveland, Cleveland Singers, Doris Love Coast and the Gospel Harmonists, the Caravan, uh, the, who, whoever else was going to be on it, the Sensation of Nine Gales, and whoever's going to solo and all that, and they called it a package. Mm. And then they went so many places together singing on the same stages and everything. That was, that's, that was what the package did. And I knew him from that, and he was familiar with Southern California, uh, Birmingham Mass Choir here in Birmingham with Mary, Mary Kay Elso. And, uh, well, you going, wait, well, hold on. You just can't drop no names like that and we're not getting no information. Wait, yeah, Birmingham yeah. had a choir back in? Birmingham Community Mass Choir. Well, yeah. well, well, okay, I forgot. We're not dealing with years. But well, well, you do remember what year you went to L.A., though. Yeah, I, yeah 79. Right? Okay, so 79, Birmingham had a choir. Yeah. And what was his name again? Birmingham Community Mass Choir. Lord, and what was, who was the director? Um, uh, Chris was... Oh. Um, 1968 still going strong today. Oh, wow. And it's still in action. They still got my love day. Oh, so that's affiliated with the GNWA. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. All right, go ahead. So we're and talking about, okay. got the uh, Hawthorne Reese Memorial Unity Choir. It's the Freedom Choir that was back during the day of the, of the Alabama Christian Movement for Human Rights mm -hmm. with the fightings and the, and the marches and all of that. Mm -hmm. And I sing with them, and they call the foot soldiers now. So I am a foot soldier also because I I did all that I did everything they did I went to jail and marched I picked it I did all of that. You know what the perfect place because we did not uh, em, uh, embrace that moment in your uh, history. You you were involved in the civil rights movement. Let's yeah. talk about that. Yeah, I was involved in it for a long time. Mm -hmm. I marched, I picked it, I went to jail twice. I uh, sung behind my little king's peaches. They had mass meetings every Monday night in different churches. Uh, 16th Street Church, where those children were bombed at, that was one of the churches that we used to have the Alabama Christian Movement uh, for, uh, uh, services there, and and all over all over Birmingham, they would they would have the, the mass meetings. Mm -hmm. That's what they call it, the mass meeting of the of the of the of, of, the, the, of, the, of, the, of the movement choir. Oh wow! Right of, of the movement. And the movement consisted of a lot of stuff. They taught us how to protect ourselves from getting hurt if they somebody wanted to hit us in the stomach, how to how to block it oh, wow. and stuff and all of that, and how to block your head, you know, to keep from getting hurt. But he because my little king was teaching nonviolence. So we was trying to keep from having to fight. Oh. But some of them did anyway, because you hit them, they're gonna hit you back. <laughs> but uh we we was we was really taught to be nonviolent mm -hmm. if we could because we try to show people how to love, and you can't love fighting back. And that's uh, it. All right, so back to Reverend James Cleveland. You met James Cleveland uh, yeah, on the him. gospel circuit, and then... Yes, I met him when I went to California. He automatically, right away, he just put me right in Southern California choir. Really? He put me in L.A. Gospel Messengers right away. I was a James Cleveland singer right away, and everything. He just put everything he was a part of, mm -hmm. he put me in it. Mm -hmm. So. And I sung in the church choir, his church choir and everything. Mm -hmm. So I was a part of all of that. And one year we had to go to, um, what was that we went? The, the, the choir had to sing and tell us Stevens choir. The Voices of Christ, right? Voices of Christ. Uh -huh. And we had to, the, the Southern California choir had to sing on it. And I did uh, Prayer, Prayer with Fix It. Okay. Them folks shouted so long. Oh, Lord. <laughs> they shouted so long. Mm -hmm. Took when they was getting ready, people going upstairs to change clothes. A lady was laying up on the floor crossways, the door still out. Wow. From from that, that from the anointing that was in that place. Jesus. And after that, for a long time, they nicknamed me Prayer with Fixing. Lord have mercy. Wow. So, and after that, I, I went with him all, a whole lot of places. 
I sung with, I, I better show you that book where I'm singing on stage in the Holy Land with James Cleaver. Oh, they ain't gonna take that. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. but anyway, I got the book at my house. I'm oh, show it to you. With me on uh, on the front cover of the book called Black Gospel, with me standing on stage singing at the mic. Uh, in the, in the whole of it. Now, uh -huh. that was, uh, let's see, like, uh, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84. That was five years shy uh -huh. of my interest into the world. Wow. And you recorded a song, The Lifeboat. The Lifeboat is coming. And they still <laughs> like the lifeboat. <laughs> they still <laughs> like the lifeboat. A star. A star. That song. I sang that song so many places, yeah. so many times. Right? So, the life of this country. Do you remember how that song was introduced to you in the format of recording? Well, well James Cleveland was the first one uh, told me what played that song and wanted me to sing it. Okay. And I, he taught it to me and I sang it, mm -hmm. and everybody liked it. Wow. So that's how that got from that to that song. And you know, your voice is uh, unique, so it makes it very easy to recognize. Right. And if I'm not mistaken, the year was 1981, uh -huh. you did Christ Won't Fail. Right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> every every album, it was like you were doing something. Christ Won't Fail, that's right. And you were doing more than one song right, on the album. Right, because he would put me on it. He, he yeah. did that. So, um, my thing is, is that, okay, so you were with the Southern California Community Choir. Uh huh. But then you were also with the James Cleveland Singers. Right, when so, I just a song with them, and he, he, he founded that group. Mm -hmm. So let's focus on your recording, uh, Whatever It Takes, I mean, uh, Whatever It Takes Jesus. Do you remember that, 1989? Whatever it takes, if it takes my time, whatever it takes, if it takes sacrifice. Yes. You still remember these songs? I still sing them. Really? Uh-huh. <laughs> I remember. Some songs like that you don't forget. 
Wow. So, you know, we can talk all day about the music that you recorded because we hear it. We have right. a chance to, to play it. Right. But one thing that we do not have the privilege of that I'm so grateful to ask you this now, share some of your personal experiences of traveling with the Southern California Community Choir. Well, when I was with Southern California Choir, I sung all the time in okay. that band at that particular. I don't sing as much now, but I, I used to sing all the time. Everywhere they went, I had a song. I had led a song or something like that. Mary Kay also launched me and all of them just put me up to the mic and I was singing. And I and I, I sung with them. I was a member of that choir before I moved to California. And when I moved back here, I just reunited with them. And I'm still singing with them today. Wow. That's right. So now we must gear our attention towards the James Cleveland singers. Now, I you call me buyers or whatever, but the 1980s James Cleveland singers, to me, they were close to heart because the sound that they produced, right. like on, especially on that album, uh, uh, you say you want deliverance. Uh -huh. That, that, album, that, that uh -huh. album is a masterpiece. Right. And so let's talk about recording with the James Cleveland singers. We had fun because he had a piano at his house. Mm -hmm. We were learning the songs at his house. He was the piano. He would, he'd say, we're going to have rehearsal uh, Friday at my house, so I want y'all to be there at, at 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock, whatever time. And they would be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would give out everybody parts, what parts he wanted them to say. And then, and then he would say, Betty, this is your part. Cleo, this is your part. You know you're up higher than her. You're an octave higher. Mm -hmm. and and then, then he to tell uh, Bernard Rome what part he had to sing, and everybody had their part. Wait, Bernard was a, oh, you talking about in the choir? Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh-uh, Cleveland -uh. singers. Bernard Rome? Yeah, Bernard Rome, he sang with the singers. He sure did. So when you joined, who were a part When I joined, it was me, Betty, Betty Keller, and uh, Marva Hines, and uh, you know Marva. Marva Hines! Yeah, Marva Hines, right. Hines. <laughs> That's my good friend, Marva. Mm -hmm. And, uh, who else? Butch, Butch Galloway, okay. uh, Bruce Henderson, um, and who, that was it. They, they didn't me. We were the two girls. Well, do you remember, did Henry Jackson sing when you were there? He sang, but he didn't sing with us at, at, as a group. Oh, so he, he didn't uh -huh. sing with us? He didn't sing with us. Uh -huh. Let's gear our attention towards the churches that were in uh, Los Angeles. Do you remember a name? Hope O'Neill. This I've been to this church many times. Really? I even went to the funeral. Really? I sure did. I was right there. Hope Bishop Hope o, Hope O'Neill. Now, what were the services like? Now, what was the name? Because I know it was Christian Tabernacle in yeah. New York. Uh -huh. But they changed the name when they came to California. I don't remember the name of the church. Dwayne, you remember the name of Pope's church in L.A.? Hope O'Neill. Because I know Christian Tabernacle was New York. I can't think of the... Uh... I think that's been the name of it. I said it's been so long. But I went to his church a so lot of times. How was the service? How was the services there? Oh, it was good. They, they shouted up. They shouted all the time. At a spiritual time. church? Yeah, it was a spiritual church. They, they shouted, baby. <laughs> they picked them up and put them down. Many times. Now, who do you remember that was a member of uh, Pope O'Neill's church in L.A.? Esther Brown. Who? Wait, that's right. She did. Estelle, she Estelle was. Okay, okay, okay. She's still in California. <laughs> Estelle. Uh -huh. And uh, what's that lady's name? Estelle John, uh, Brown with uh, the Sweet Inspiration. Uh, sweet Inspiration. Oh, that's okay. her. I know her real. We were good friends. Oh, wow. Estelle Brown. I can't think of this other lady. I can't think. So many of them. I, so can't, I can't remember their name. What about musicians? I can't remember who was the musician at that time because he'd be using different people a yeah. lot of times. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for me to tell who was the main musician mm -hmm. or who because somebody was always at a play. Wow. Yeah, but I used to go there a lot of times. And what would you say his preaching style was? Was he a lecturer or was he, was he like a his preach, he wasn't, hard preacher? He wasn't, he wasn't one of them hard preachers. Uh -huh. But what he told you, he told you, and then he'll turn around and prophesy to you too. Oh, really? Because he was, prop he was a prophet. Oh, yeah. He did a lot of prophetic stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, and you stayed in LA for how long? 17 years, I think it 17 was. 17 years? Mm -hmm. So you met a lot of people in LA? A lot of people. <laughs> a lot of people, yes. 
Wow. I so, got friends still that I talk to all the time. So give us, take us to LA when you were there. Like what, is, what, what are some of the concerts that stick out to you when you were in LA? Well, they would sometimes, the Birmingham, I mean, the, 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 the community choir sung around the, the, uh, the city mm -hmm. at different churches mm -hmm. when they had programs and things and women days and all, they wanted mm -hmm. the choir to come and be their guests. We sung on a lot of stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But most of the time it's when we go out of town to sing for somebody else like Helen Stevens and all that, like that. They would, oh, you're talking about like in regional? regional. Uh-huh, right. Such what you remember of? Cornerstone. Now, that was James how Stevens dare Church. us not talk about Cornerstone? Talk about Cornerstone. Cornerstone Institution of... Uh-oh, we got to say a whole name. Church. That's <laughs> right. That's right. And uh, I was a member of that. I joined that and everything. Mm -hmm. And they had some good times up in that church. Right? Really? Oh, they had some good times up in there. The shouting going on up in there. How the pastor, uh, James seemed to be up there talking, and you look at somebody in the corner and just pray, just scaring them up from the nap. All right, so, so. I don't know. I'm just very excited to be in your presence. And I'm glad you're in my presence, it's, too. It's just always something about seeing the people in person that you've seen on on the screen, I'll say, as well as recordings of. Right. So that's basically just, I'm just soaking up the moment you know thank you but i will i will say like i know you spoke about it previously but your experience during the civil rights rallies i'll say uh-huh there is a recording that is on youtube city called heaven city called heaven oh i sung that so much yes Lord. let me tell you that's one of my favorite songs but my and that was real young then too do you were you asked to sing certain songs or did you sing what was led on your heart sometimes that's what i want to do mm -hmm. and sometimes it's what they request gotcha gotcha because i'm telling you you sang that city called heaven <laughs> Somebody, <laughs> did. george stood george stood called me about that city called heaven he said i listened to that song and he said I, 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 it, it just told me up in my house. He said, <laughs> that song got me messed up. I said, and I wasn't even at my best with that because I was, hadn't really, you know, got that kind of recognition with singing like that. I had a lot of recognition, but not to the point where folks just called and told me how they enjoyed yes. it. You did? Yeah, said, what did I do different? Yeah, I'm <laughs> but you, it's, uh, it's, I enjoyed it's, it, but he, he loved that song. But they, every time I sang that song, it, the, in the movement, that people would be crying and shouting and hollering and screaming and going on <laughs> yes. every single time. And I, I have another I heard question. of a city called Heaven, oh. and I'm trying to make it my I'm home. Trying to make it my uh, home. Sometimes I'm tossed and driven. Oh. Sometimes I don't know which way to turn. <laughs> but I've heard of a city called Heaven, yeah. and I'm trying to make it my home. Oh, yes. See? My I'm mother has city, reached the right glory. My father's still walking in sin. My sisters and brothers won't own me because I'm trying to make it in. Oh, wow. All right, right, I gotta run. Because... So we just made it to, so tell us where we, where are we at right now? We're at Sister Roebuck Drive at Monument of Love Christian Life Ministry Church. Right. Pastor Eunice Ford is the pastor here. Wow, let me get some footage of this church. How long have you been a member here? About six years. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> And I come in and take movie after movie. Mm -hmm. You be rich. You be rich. They don't have time for that. All right, Gospel Diary. So we have talked to Sister Cleo Kennedy about her career, amazing career. Uh, but now let's talk about some uh, experiences with James Cleveland. <laughs> you just tell us about one experience when you all were on the plane. Yes. <laughs> well, we was on the plane. Every time we have a flight, James Cleveland wouldn't sit with no, let nobody sit with him on the plane but me because I was the smallest one. Smart. And if anybody else came and sit there, he made them get up. He said, y'all know. She sit with me all the time. Go find you another seat because this is my seat and she's sitting with me, not you. Go find you another seat. And they would go get another seat because they know he wasn't going to stop until they got up. Mm -hmm. And uh, the students was going, we was in the first class section by accident because they'd overbooked the flight. So they had to put us in first class. And we had to sit in first class and the rest of the group was in the coach back uh -huh. in the back. And 
he been about a lunch with him because he going to eat everywhere he go. He had fixed the lunch and had all these pork chops and everything in it. In a, uh huh. In a bag <laughs> on the plane. That's right. And and he got up and got pulled the curtain back uh-huh. <laughs> from the, that separates the first class from the coach mm-hmm. and looked back at them and held up his back and said, yeah, I want some of my pork chops. They show is good. <laughs> and uh, and Butch said, "Yeah, I want some. I don't know about nobody else." He, so he uh, he had them in the bag, and they went. They ate the pork chops, and we was eating what they had in first class. Lord have mercy. And this lady came around with all these cheeses on the plate, a whole bunch of cheese, all kind, different kind, <laughs> so yellow cheese, white cheese, all kind. And she said, "Sir, sir, would you like some cheese?" She said, "Yes." One of each, <laughs> and she he said she said yeah they look good don't they? He said yes they do. So she put about five on the plate and went to walk away. Mm-hmm. He grabbed the back of her skirt and pulled her back and back. <laughs> I said one of each. Oh, so he got his he got his request. Uh, yeah, he got it. He was at first class. At first class, you supposed to get what you want. Oh Lord. And he got it. She went back and put some more on there. But she was red as a beach. She was so mad she didn't know what to do. <laughs> and then he pat on the show and said, "Have a good day, okay." Uh, <laughs> I had to rev you all the quick. So what was what was uh, rehearsal like with Reverend Sweetman? Wait, we had rehearsal one night, <laughs> and we were rehearsing for a program, mm-hmm. and the choir had to sing. And every every Monday night when the choir would come for rehearsal, mm-hmm. the same boy would come with all this paper and pencils and all this stuff, writing the words to every song every time he came to the rehearsal. So this particular night, <laughs> Reverend was telling the same, and then, then nobody had a paper but him writing the words to the song. And Reverend said, excuse me, sir, um, I don't mean no harm, but are you a ventriloquist? <laughs> he said, Beg your pardon? He said, I said, are you a ventriloquist? Are you throwing your voice that I don't know it or what? If you are, tell me because I'm not, I don't never see you saying a word. All you do is write the whole verse. <laughs> and when we get ready to dismiss, you're still writing. What are you writing? You have not put that pen down since we started rehearsal. And, and he said, uh, I was writing the song. He said, well, you stay at home the next time till you learn them. Lord have mercy. Of uh, course, he did. Every time he came, uh-huh. he would write the words to the song. Even if the song he had already wrote the words to, he would still write the words again. And Reverend saw him, and he couldn't take it no more. Oh he said, God. excuse me, sir, you've been to <laughs> He must have been obsessed with writing. He, I don't know what he was, but he, <laughs> he wasn't learning them songs. He was just writing. And wow. then no song he had wrote. Wow. Now, was there ever a moment like in the choir rehearsal when someone was flat and James Cleveland had to get them together? Oh, yeah. Yeah, tell him. Real quick. Uh, baby, when you get to that part right there, don't you say nothing. Let the choir do that part. <laughs> and then and then when you, and when you catch on to the part you know, then you come back oh, in. Really? Yeah, you do it. Baby, he'll get you in a minute. He will get them, baby. He said, because every time we get to that part, you're the only one mess up. Oh, you'll be flat. He said, I don't know what you ate before you came, but you, you must be too full because you were flat. <laughs> he, that man was funny. He said all kind of funny stuff. Oh, <laughs> he wow. kept us laughing all the time. What about, uh, did you ever like ride in the car with him? Oh, yeah. Wait, he didn't know I didn't drive. And <laughs> when I moved there, so uh, this man, one of the men uh, came to the church. He was giving him a nice car. It really looked like it was new. And he had another car, and he was giving it to James Cleveland. So you got to have, have a member or something at your church that needs some transportation. I'm going to just give you this car. You know who to give it to. He came to me. He said, I know just the person needs the transportation. You're talking about me, right? Uh-huh. Came driving up to my house in front of the door. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and I came out to the door. Come here. I got something to show you. I said, what? He said, I got you a nice little car this man just gave me. And, 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 and I, I told him I, I had the person that needs the transportation, and I got you this little car, and it's free. You don't owe nothing for it. I bust out laughing. He said, what you laughing at? I said, Reverend, I don't, laugh. I don't drive. He said, well, I be doggone. He wanted to say, well, I be damn. <laughs> I said on his face. <laughs> he said, I done got you a car to get you around in, and you can't even drive. I, no, sir, unless you Gonna have me a driver too. Uh oh. <laughs> so did. Bye, you guys. That's right. <laughs>
coat in the one the next to the, the store next door to where we were staying. Mm -hmm. And it was sharp. I love that coat. And I was telling him about it. I was sitting on his bed and he was sitting down on the floor in his in his shortest. And uh I said, Rem, I saw a sharp coat. I really like that coat. And when we get paid after the program, I'm going to get that coat. So don't y'all leave me. I'm going to get that coat and I'll be right back. He went in his pocket and pulled out. How much was it? And I told him he put I think that coat was two hundred and forty some dollars. He pulled two hundred dollars out of his pocket and throwed it down there and said, Keep your mouth closed. I said, I promise you I know how. <laughs> I promise you I know how. I ain't gonna do nothing with it. I ain't gonna even eat right now. <laughs> he gave me that money for that coat and I went and got it too. Wow. Oh, he, he was good to me, huh? Yeah, he said that in that closet oh, somewhere. Sorry, yeah. yeah, I got it. Oh my god. You, do you still have any roads from the um no, I left, I, I left all them at the church when they had the church. I kept them in the choir room. They had a room for the choir, mm -hmm. and I, we just left all the rolls and stuff what in there. What about your dresses, well, gowns or dresses? With oh, actually, clips, I kept all that. Things. I kept all that stuff. You still got that? Yeah, I got Can it. Can I see some of that? When, you're doing? when next time you come, because oh, okay. it's yeah. back up in them closets. Oh, okay. I got one, two, three, four. It's five closets in that house, oh, and wow. every one of them jam-packed.